Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I'm a big baby, and uh, my uh, uh, my what do you call it wasn't working. My uh, my PlayStation wasn't working. So uh, I uh, 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 yeah, there we go. Uh, my PlayStation wasn't working, and and I uh, uh, couldn't get it working. And I was sitting here going, I'm not going to be able to do a show as long as that thing isn't working. I don't know how many of you have that kind of situation. Uh, or have had that kind of problem, but uh, uh, I guess you know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, or maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Anyway, I decided, what the hell with it? You know, I, I'm, I'm here right as rain most of the time, uh, doing a show every night, da, 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 right on time, da, 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 and I go, what the fuck? You know, I had some things I wanted to uh, wanted to do, uh, and I needed to solve a problem, and uh, I didn't feel like going on in that in that mood because it would be worrying me till the end of the show. I finally got it fixed. I finally got it fixed, but it took a while. So anyway, so we'll run a truncated show tonight, which probably this show should be an hour every night anyway, but it isn't. Hmm. So here I am. If any of you care, or any of you. Uh, want to be part of it uh, you know how to do that uh, let me see here let me just clear out a few things here uh, Phil Meyer says are you okay yeah I'm okay now I'm okay uh, you know just one thing or another uh, and uh, so I, I, I just you know uh, let me see here let me turn on my uh, the Skype that's what I should do if anybody wants to call if anybody wants to call a cranky old guy tonight uh, our number is uh, uh, at Skype is GabNet Live, uh, and if you don't want to do that, uh, uh, then you can use the phone, and you can go over to GabNet.net and find out all the various things that you can do in order to to make it work. And it, hey, here's here's Rob Alfano, who I was actually worried about earlier in the day because he lives down in the areas where where things are going. <coughs> Rather Sorry hinky. about that. That's okay. Where things are going rather hinky weather-wise, but you Where didn't you, you, you didn't have that problem, huh? No, not at all. Actually, it's uh, rather quiet. Um, sitting in the garage, the doors open. There's no rain. We haven't had any rain today. Yeah. Now, now what? I mean, we've had some drizzle. You know, it's been. We have not had a sunny day in three weeks. But um, really, <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to get sun Wednesday to Thursday, maybe. I was so happy though. When it suddenly got cooler here, because it's just been unrelentingly hot all summer long, and all of a sudden, ta da! You know, it's it's great. Let me get uh, let me let me do a little adjustment here to get out of uh, Scott Bodiger's face. Uh, <laughs> face man. Yeah, well, I have to do that. Yeah, I have to do all. I'm the chief cook and bottle washer around here. You know. So I hope you didn't mind me going on late tonight, but gee, we filled up the lines pretty fast since I didn't do it. Didn't. I was going to New York to look for in the obit, see if you died. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Scott. I got really upset. I said, "Oh my God, I hope something didn't happen." No, I know. I, just, I thought, "Oh my God, girlfriend so, came home, he had sex, and he died." Here, here, here's <laughs> what happened, and I, I know none of you can relate to this. Uh, I've been waiting for the new Tomb Raider game to come out because I love Tomb Raider. I love playing it. Okay, I don't know if any of you play games, but I do. Uh, and uh, so I, 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 you know, uh, I was doing, uh, uh, I, I got the new Tomb Raider, I plug it in, and it says, oh, you need to upload to the newest uh, operating system for uh, PlayStation. Uh, so I try, and it goes, error, 
it yeah. won't download it. So now I'm trying all kinds of ways, like downloading the program from online and then playing, trying to get it go through a USB port. None of that's working. So I was so upset by the time I came here on the air, I just went, I cannot solve this problem unless I go off the air and go solve it, and then I can come on the air and be my same old self. So actually, for the rest of you, we're only on about 10 minutes late, you know. Because oh, uh, none of you give a shit about this program from uh, 10 o'clock until 10.30. Yeah, well, and there's yeah, no girlfriend. No there was girlfriend. the jet lag. Huh? Uh, there was the PlayStation. I, I heard the whole thing. Oh, you, you heard that part of it. I, I called yeah. Phil to find out what, what the hell happened. He told me. Oh. I was I Because I tuned in about 20 after, and yeah. then it was gone. I was like, well, yeah, there must yeah. be a problem. Yeah. Well, it was also very frustrating to me. Today I go to my Facebook page where I post the show from the night before. Yeah. And only 32 people looked at it. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck am I posting this show for in the first place? Well, maybe they they look at it now on YouTube and on the uh, uh, the Gabnet connection to YouTube. Uh, uh, well, I'm thinking of taking it off, I do. completely off of Facebook and just saying, if you want to watch it, go to Gabnet.net or go to YouTube. You know, what's it cost you? What's it cost you to put it on Facebook? Doesn't cost me anything to put it on Facebook. Right. Exactly. Doesn't it go on at the same time when you mount it to other no, uh, medias? No. no. Oh, you oh, have no, to no, separately. No, no, no. It. I. It, when I. Uh, when I put it up, I have to. I. Yeah. I have to. Uh, you know, literally post it to that. Oh. I post it to that to Vimeo to live stream. I'm thinking of getting rid of live stream. Does anybody watch this show ever on live stream? No, they don't even have live And I pay 49 bucks a month for that piece of shit. Wow. Right? So I'm thinking of dumping that. Uh, I thought the only reason you needed it was because it allowed you to uh, go to Facebook. And, uh, and there was a reason you didn't want to get rid of it. Well, uh, you see initially I didn't want to get rid I wanted to get rid of it. And then what they did, they had this thing called a... a their their uh, a live, uh, live stream studio, which was a switcher. Which they were charging like nine hundred ten thousand dollars for, and then all of a sudden one day they said, "If you're a subscriber, you can just use it." And yeah. I and it's a very good program. The only problem is it has certain drawbacks for doing this show. But one of the things it did is you could I could broadcast it if I had enough power in the machine to uh, almost every social media outlet at the same time, except Facebook. I could do it on Facebook if I did not do it on any of those others because Facebook won't allow it. Because Facebook yeah. are a bunch of shit hell holes. So I really I should just not post it at all to Facebook, you know. Yeah, and save fifty bucks a month. People you know want it. You can go to Gabnet. It's there. Gabnet.net. It's there. The show is live there. You know. So. You should make that your destination to watch the show after the, the fact. O the only thing is, do you get a notification to your 5,000 Facebook people that, uh, no. that you post it? No? No. They you don't, don't notify it? it? Hey, uh, you know, we're going to need to change change up this show. I'm going to have to get a garage. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I can... what, what is it? Now, wait a minute. Now, now here's, here's what I, I was about to mention that. I mean, I stole, stole your thunder again. You know, Rob, that's a beautiful uh, color paint on what kind of car is that? A Tesla or what is it? No, a Tesla. Gee, that, it's a Corvette. I wish it was a Tesla. It's like it's a, a beautiful color Corvette. paint. It's not painted at all. Now, what year Corvette is that? <laughs> that's a, it's an 01. It's Does an it 01? Have like a, what do you call that when it's sort of like shiny, like not glitter, but metallic? Coat. Now, have they? Yeah, have, yeah, it's it's a it's a metallic paint. Has it That's gone beautiful. up in value? Uh, no. no. It's not going up in value. Because my friend Buddy Love owns like, uh, what is it, a 63 Corvette or oh, something like that? Those are worth cool. money. That'll be, yeah. You, yeah, and he said it was worth. I'd oh, have to hold on to this grand. forever. Yeah. For, yeah. I'd have to hold uh, on to this forever. If the it, well, 63 it, split window coupe, uh, they only made it that year. And that's worth about a hundred. I grand. think his is a split window. Yeah, that's really. Real. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. And the '67s do well too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stingray. Do you, you know, I watch this one show. I don't know why I watch it, but because I, I've never been a big fan of the person doing it. 
but uh, I was watching, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jay, Leno. Jay Leno. Jay Leno and his garage show. I record it. Right? And uh, at the end of the show, he has this guy that comes on. And they have three cars, and they tell you what they were worth when they were new, right? And then what they're worth today. And I, I, I like, he could do a whole hour of just that. And yeah. I would be fascinated, you know. Well, I cherry you... pick them. I record those shows and then I cherry pick what I watch because I don't really care when he's driving a tank or when he's driving some wacky train or whatever. I like looking at the cars and so I, I, uh, I get a kick out of the old cars. So it's antique road show for cars. Yeah, kind of, well, at that, at that part of the show. Kind of. That part of the yeah. show. Yes, uh, Jason. Hello there. You're in your garage too, aren't you? Yeah. So I did a job one time for a customer fixing a phone line, and it was a warehouse for some multimillionaire or billionaire. And all he had in his garage was uh, classic cars and, like, one-of-a-kind cars from TV shows and stuff like that, all covered in plastic. And he had his own mechanics. He had two mechanics there you know, that worked full-time, and all they did is took care of these cars in this warehouse for some millionaire or billionaire. This this customer of mine gave me this. He signed it. Uh, I just did a job for him. He he's the king. He's like Barris. He uh, he hangs out with all of those guys. John D'Agostino, and his thing is cu uh, custom cars. And he, he was in the Netherlands over the weekend at a custom car show. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever uh, seen any of those? You know, like the Barris, the Batmobile things. Yeah, like that. yeah. The, well, the Munsters car. It, well, Ed, the Eddie Munster was at uh, this show that he did in Kansas. Uh, Butch Patrick. Yeah. He actually called him on the phone while he was in my store and had a conversation with him because they were getting together uh, about three weekends ago. And uh, so, yeah, he gave me a bunch of. Uh, uh, I love a those bunch cars. Of, a bunch of his stuff. Uh, He's got the Elvis Cadillac. Uh, those those like '50s Buick Roadmasters are gorgeous cars. Yeah, here's here's another one he gave me. Uh, uh, this is a uh, Pontiac, I think. Uh, and let's see. Well, here here's the thing that I about me. I never really was a big car fan. Okay, I'm to me. Yeah. My father always saw me. Okay, uh, my my <laughs> father always said to me. Uh, who's that? Your neighbor in back of you, uh, uh, Jason? Yeah, that's my wife. That's your wife. Oh, it, <laughs> sorry about that. She's probably saying, "Get off the air." <laughs> I think Jason is her hair short or she has a very back. short, very short. Nah, no, she shaved it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because okay. that's why I didn't recognize her. You know. Uh, but anyway, didn't on. you see the huge tits? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And and quite frankly, since she's your wife, I'm even if I did, I wouldn't say I did. That's right. <laughs> there, I noticed the huge tits just then. <laughs> she's giving me a dirty hit, 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 Jason. <laughs> okay, there's your lovely and adorable wife. I I like her. She's she really nice. She's like, yeah, you're talking shit about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, what I was going to say is, is that I've never been a big guy for cars, you know, because my father kind of taught me that cars were just practical, you know. They get you from this place to this place, and it doesn't matter how fancy they are, how special they are, they still only get you from one place to another. That's their basic function. So I never went, ooh, i got to have one of those. You know, i got to have a Ferrari. i got to have this or that. But somehow, when I started making money, somehow I just managed to be buying cars that were slightly more expensive. So I went out and I bought a, uh, first I bought an RX-7. I remember that. You know, those are great little cars with the, with the, with the Wankel engine, the rotary engine. Oh, my God, I remember that. Yeah. The Wankel rotary engine. Yeah. And finally. I did a report in school. Yeah. That, that one kind of got old. So I went mm -hmm. and got uh the next car I got was a, uh, a, a Nissan or do, a Nissan um, uh, a Z. 300Z. 300 300Z. 300 and I, nice I never had this happen to me because I never cared that much about, you know, fancy cars. But I would drive that down the street and kids would give me the OK sign <laughs> as I drove by, you know. 
and, and there was a time also where if you had a sports car like an RX-7 or a, or a, or a, a 300Z. They, they wave to each other. They wave. Yeah. You wave to they each other. They still do that. If yeah. I drive down, when I drive down the street, people, like a guy in another vet especially, will always, you know, high sign or something to go, hey, nice yeah. car, nice car. Happens motorcycles all the time. do like that. Like the Harley wave, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, so uh, anyway, so I, uh, you know, I never was big into cars, but then all of a sudden I had cars that people were waving at me at and going me, giving me the okay sign, you know. I think Jeep uh, Wrangler is one of the biggest ones that are doing that. Uh, really? Really? Yeah, yeah, people at Jeep Wranglers, there's like a club or a family that they're a part of. Mustangs, Wranglers, Vets, well, cars minute, that know, people... I, look, I, I, I say and... I never cared about cars, but I had a Mustang. I had one of the original Mustangs. I had like the second year that the Mustang 65, came really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know who used right. to do it all the time is truck drivers do it all the time. Too bad you don't have that anymore. It'd be worth money today. What? Uh, that, that Mustang. Not, that not Mustang. worth that much, though. Yeah, but no, 64, 65 Mustangs, the first series? If they're grand? in really good shape, mm, well, that's that, that. that's the proviso. If they're in really they, good, they shape. they were, but they've gone down. You know what? Because from watching Leno, what I learned is if it's in original shape, it doesn't yes, even have to be in it. good shape. It that's could have patina it. all over it. Don't refinish it. Don't redo it. It's worth more. Yes. Now, it's do the you remember part. when Harris, Bill Harris, died, and he had this big collection of cars? I should I should have bought. I mean, they were going cheap. He had hundreds of cars. And uh, original, uh, yeah. You know what I found out though. This 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 is the thing that really galled me. Uh, for instance, I had uh, there was an album that came out of the Beatles called Here, There, and Everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you got one of the original copies of Here, There, and Everywhere, uh, it was uh, a um, you got the original copy of Here, There, and Everywhere. In America, they put a different cover on it. And the reason they put a different cover on it was because the original cover in, Eng in England, over here, they considered in bad taste. Hello, Jeff. They considered it in bad taste because it had them in, in, in uh, butcher's outfits or maybe in doctor's smocks. And then blood all over them, and severed baby doll heads all over the place. <laughs> and that was the, that, that was the cover of Here, There, and Everywhere. And the when it heads. came over here, they suddenly went crazy about this. Now some people got it before they recalled them, but what happened was Capitol recalled them, but because they didn't want to spend more money on albums, they simply pasted the new cover over the old cover. So I had a copy, and I looked, and I looked under, and it was a, you could almost see it kind of through the, through the white part of the of the of, of the cover. So I went and I steamed it off, and there it was, you know, the baby bloody baby album cover. And I thought that'd be worth something someday. I found out it was worth a little bit. But it would have if been you worth left the original a lot one on. if I had left. Yeah, if, <laughs> if I had left the the the, uh, the fake cover on the front, then it would be worth a fortune. Damn. It didn't the Stones have a cover like that too at one point that they did something too? I thought. No, Wasn't I don't. It, not that uh, I remember. It was the one with the zipper on it? I thought, or something like that. Uh, oh, you mean the uh, Sticky Fingers album, which had a zipper? Yeah, it, it wasn't had, there? Wasn't there something? It had an actual zipper. About on, that one? It had an actual zipper on it. Yeah, you yeah. I, I thought there was something that they put out, and then they had to pull it back or something. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. And then there was the white album the Beatles had, where they stamped a number on each album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the earlier ones you could get, the more it was worth. I think I had one that was like seven hundred and something. Yeah, should have had number nine. Number nine. Yeah, <laughs> I bet that one's worth a fortune. Get me on, Deadman. But yeah, but I mean, it was it, it, it was it was quite a you know, uh, and it, so it is, sometimes if if something is you buy something and then you alter it, uh, or you maybe try to even get it back to the way it was, it was the fault, it was the failure, it was the whatever yeah. that made it worth money. 
The blem, now, yeah. You know what the problem was with people in radio? Is that they never bought records. They always got radio uh, co- radio station only, not for sale. Yeah, uh, yeah, they got you know, stamped on them, yeah. Well, well that was, uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I went into radio uh, for two things, the free records and to get laid. And I got <laughs> and I got a yeah. lot of free records. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I'll tell you a story about the free records. So you know, you get I get these albums every day. There was another. Yeah. I was on the mailing list. They would. They don't didn't do that in later years, but early on, they you, they send you everything that came out. I was on Atlantic's mailing yeah. list, so I got every album that came out. Right. Now, of course, only a couple of those albums are going to be worth keeping. The rest of them were just total it's shit, garbage. right? Garbage. So I used to put them in a pile by the door of my apartment on 14th Street. And they were getting pretty high. And all of a sudden, Halloween comes along. And I figure I know how to get rid of these albums. <laughs> so kids come to the door and they go, trick or treat. And I, I take like 10 albums and give it to one little kid, you know, who could barely haul these things away. Where's right? the candy? And I, and, no, and I, and they were happy. They were records. Wow! And I was giving kids records and so on, and they all went away. And the pile was a little smaller than it had been. And then all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. Uh, you got anything better than these? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I another knock at the door. Uh, I don't want to keep these here. <laughs> I don't want to carry them. Candy. I don't want to carry them. <laughs> I, I t- you know what I did? I was about 14, and my friend and I, we go down to Billboard uh, to their offices in New York. Yeah. And I and I, I grabbed my, I took the train, and I had my father's hand truck. And we hand trucked out about six boxes of records they, they gave us. And uh, we had like 40 copies of this one record. I, and it was, it was awful. And, and you know, the, but... Uh, we, I took these things on the train, cherished these, got them home, and there was nothing worth listening to. No, they, no most of them were crap. You know? Yeah. Uh, but in those days, they signed any group they could lay their hands on, and they put out an album on them, and maybe they would stick, and maybe they wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, now, Rhode Island Radio, I was music director and uh, out on Long Island, and we used to have some uh, two guys who I felt like so thrilled that would come out and see us because we're out in Long Island, no, no one's coming to see you. But a guy from CBS Records by the name of Ray Free, he's a legendary guy in New York. And another guy who was Motown and like a whole bunch of other labels by the name of Mo Schulman. Mm-hmm. Both of these guys would come, give us all kinds of crap. We'd go out to lunch and they would tell stories about the 60s and the 70s and taking out Mick Jagger. And it was awesome. These guys were just, they could just sit and tell stories like all day and they were fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, you ever hear a Carmen Legio? No. I guess nobody else did either. I had 40 copies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, uh, but, you know, occasionally, I'll tell you, I often like to tell the story and I've told it before. Some of you probably heard it. I was working in Klamath Falls, Oregon, at KLAD was the name of the station, and um, it was in an old uh, lumber uh, office by by the ra- in the railway yard. And sometimes I'd have to wait for a whole train to move before I could go to work. And sometimes I'd have to crawl under the train because I was late and leave my car on the other side of the track. Uh, and uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, it, it was this weird kind of like it was I guess it was a lumber building a lumber yard building or whatever and uh, uh, it had this one big huge room that nobody did anything so they took all the records they didn't want and threw them in there just 45s all over the place just piled high and so when I wasn't on the air I you know I got nothing better to do right uh, I'll go looking through the 45s cuz I you know in those days you you like to collect 45s right and I'm looking through and I go oh, this is good and this is good and I remember seeing in front of my face okay uh Elvis this, Presley this record yeah 
Uh, oh, excuse me. I've got everybody. I've got to rechange this back to the way it should be. Uh, 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 yeah, it, it's at Elvis Presley, Sun Records, Mystery Train. I fucking hate Elvis, and I threw it away. <laughs> if I had that record today, I've been told it's worth twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh wow. shit. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, I, I, the, the mistakes I've made that way have been legendary. <laughs> you know, yeah, fuck it, I hate Elvis. Boom. But you got to remember the time. You know, this this record wasn't that old a record, but it was just a matter that if I kept it, you know, not throwing it away today, be worth oh, shit, God, amazing. And Blue Moon in Kentucky was on the other side. <clears throat> so, hmm. Yeah. There was probably tons of them there, too, because radio stations with 45s, you would, back in the day before carts, before you would record them on carts and stations would play the carts, were actually queuing up 45s, and they would all get queue burned in the beginning. Well, here, here's why. Wherever here, you queued yeah. it up. So they would give you like nine, ten copies so that every time you, after a while, you can change it out and get another one. Well, we used to have to slip start records. Yep. That was the yeah. term. Now they just push a button and the file goes off, right? Yeah. 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 They don't even push the button uh, anymore. It, it just plays. It just plays. Uh, but, but what it, are carts? They look like eight tracks. Oh, yeah. They look like eight tracks, but they, they're, bigger. They, they're not no. much bigger, but they, they, were, they, they have they, they were a song on them and then they yeah. automatically cue at the beginning when, when they stop. Or and if a it's PSA. A, yeah, whatever, commercials or whatever, and, and what, you just what put a key was, tone on it, and it, it would stop it, it at the beginning. Look, it was exactly the same size as an 8-track. I used as to a, pull it, them man, Can I finish, Phil? It was the yeah. same as a, 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 a same size as an 8-track. Uh, but the difference was is that the, uh, the capstan was built in to the 8-track. The capstan is that roller that goes around. It was built mm -hmm. into the into the A track into the uh, in, in, into the uh, cartridge cartridge, uh, and that was the big difference between that and an eight track. Otherwise, they Did you ever rebuild them? We used to have. I worked at a station where we had to wind our own carts, so you had this big tape okay. winder, and well, then after a while, the pads would go bad, so well, you'd buy let, the pads. But and you're put not the pads you're, you're leaving there. a piece of information out of here, Rob, and that is that they were on a Mobius strip. They were on a, a, a loop. Continuous loop. It, continuous loop in which the tape would play, and then it would go to the inside of the reel, and then it would eventually come back out to the outside right. when it, it yeah. Uh, if you would it, always want to make sure that you didn't record over the splice, so you would always find the, sp yeah. the splice and stop it just after it, and then you'd right. record there. So and you know, how you these things a, work. Wasn't it, wasn't it like a metal splice that would stop it or something like that? It wouldn't or stop it, of, no. It wouldn't stop it. Now okay. they but all, it, you'd hear a noise. They I mean, all the, weren't, yeah. weren't one minute of tape. Just, sometimes, just Jason... Sometimes Just Jason asking that question makes me feel well, old. Well, sometimes sometimes <laughs> there were eight minutes of tape or six yeah, minutes of tape. Sizes. And what would happen is it, between tape, each, what's that? what you would do is you could put six commercials it on does. one cartridge, and then there was a tone between each one that would stop the cartridge. Okay? Yeah, that's what and Kevin then, was probably and so, yeah, so yeah, let's say yeah. somebody bought a... a, a some ads on your station and they had six different versions of a commercial they would you would put all six different commercials on there with this tone in between it and when it was through playing it would stop and the next time you played it was the next one was ready to go yeah people uh, so people uh, i almost forgot about cartridges because well, yeah they, it's kind of like that uh that little flash when you're watching the movies on TV and you'd get that little flash up in the corner oh, and that's know, when a commercial you, was coming. No, yes. no, that, that isn't that's what the pan. flash was. That wasn't what the flash was. It was to change the change the wheel. Yeah, or change or whatever. It, it, there was, was, it, was, a, a, it was, was a signal to the, it was to a the guy doing no, that. There was a real change, I know, because yeah. I helped somebody run his movie theater and I learned to be a projectionist. Yeah. And what you would do me about is that. you would sit there and wait and uh, you would see the dot, the first dot. Yep. Yeah. The first yeah. dot came. I used to hang out with a buddy of mine that worked at 36, and he used to yeah. say, and then the, the bloop would come up, and you'd be yeah. getting ready to run the a commercial. First, well, the first dot would come up. This yeah. is in a theater. Uh, and then it would, uh, I think maybe in 30 seconds, 
And then yeah, at 10 like seconds, that. at 10 seconds, another one would hit. And at that point, you started the other projector, right. which was 10 right. seconds of dead frames. And then at, at the next dot, you'd flip a, shot a, you'd flip right. a and thing and it would flip change. over to the other You told me projector. what those dots were called. I think it was a flash pan. No, or no, uh, no. No, I don't know what, what they were called. They were they were called. This is when you change projectors. So I, used to, I used to work master <laughs> control for American movie classics, Bravo, AMC, uh, Playboy Channel, and I used to do live switches of the movies from one inch tape at this point on air. So you would have a movie on two reels or three reels, and you would watch for those. Then you'd go out five second pre roll. Hit the button and do it on a shot. It'd be always be a shot change where you would actually hit the button. Right. Well, that's and, what they uh, did in the movie theaters. If you if you look at old movies now, they, you, it, I think they've eliminated the dots. They've kind of yeah. They've kind yeah, of they're, washed they're them gone. out or something or digitally removed them or whatever. But whenever that happened, there was always a lot of times in the theater. There was almost a change in the amount of light going on the screen. You know. It was uh, funny because one time I actually put the movie up in the wrong order and went from part <laughs> one to part three oh, yeah. and then part two, and I didn't even realize I've it. been in theaters oh, where shit. that happened, where all of a sudden you're like, you know, oh, two shit. reels The movie ahead. I had seen three freaking times already on Bravo, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's like, I think it was like La Caja Fall or something. We used to run the shit out of that movie. You and it was give a I, shit anyway. No, and I'm just I'm reading, and all of a sudden, no, I see I got five minutes left, and I just go fire up the machine, and I'm getting yeah. ready, and I, yeah. I'm not paying I'll attention to do the switch, and then I'm like, somebody came in and said, "You're running this out of order." I'm like, "Shit!" <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> and then there were sometimes the projectionist in the theater fell asleep, and then there was nothing but blank screen, and yeah, all of a yeah, sudden yeah. the audience Does would start. Remember stopping? a guy on American Movie Classics back in the '80s named he was the host. And his name was Bob. Uh, Bob. Uh, yeah, Bob. Bob. Gibson. What was his name? I can't think of Bob his name. Uh. Bob. What's his name? <laughs> no, but I so, know. I, 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 I know who you're trying to remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so one day I was running American Movie Classics, yeah. and I come out of the movie, and I was off doing one of my chores. Right. The last reel of the movie was only about six minutes long. Yeah. So I, I, I start the last reel. I'm not thinking it's six minutes long. Usually they're an hour. I go off and I'm doing my other chores while it's playing. I come back to the control room and there's black on the air. And I see plus 45, plus 46. <laughs> so I, like, Whoa. So I, I hit, you know, Bob was on tape. I hit the button for the interstitial reel and Bob comes out of it. It was the funniest thing because he, you know, I had no idea. And he, he starts and he goes, wasn't that something? Osborne. <laughs> That, Bob no, Osborne. no, no, not Bob Osborne. Um, no, Osborne was over at T. Uh, T uh, Bob TCDN. Dorian. Bob Dorian. Dorian. There you go. Dorian, right? You're right. What did remember. you do? Did you just? So did he you comes ju- out of 45 Bob seconds Dorian. of black. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just look that up, Kevin? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. okay. All right. He comes out I knew of, it off the top of my. I couldn't figure it out which he, one it was. He cheated. He comes, out of, <laughs> he comes out of 45 seconds of black. I mean, you're just sitting there looking at the black screen, and he goes, "Wasn't that something?" Yeah. Ray, Ray's with us, but we don't see his picture. But yeah, it's... I'm outside, uh, and it's a hassle for me to do the video. It's dark, and it hurts my shoulder. So. Uh, oh boy, you're not willing to suffer with this show. Everybody else is, you know. Uh, but, huh? I'll put it on. Yeah, we're reminiscing about about uh, old Technology. things. But you know, we were talking about uh, something I wanted to bring up when we were talking about radio, and this is something that people are not really quite aware of. You're, you're talking about that. Why records, many times when they played them on stations, were kind of really scratchy at the beginning? And the reason was is a thing we called slip starting. And that was a technique, right, Rob? Hold your finger oh, on the edge of the record. You, you, what you, what you did, Alex, it queued up. Well, a turntable? Was well, it a turntable? Yeah. What, what you did, you had yeah. a turntable. And then right. on on top of the turntable, you had a felt pad. Yeah. Right. And I then what you would do turntable. is you would <laughs> uh, take the record and you would start it and then you would wait for some sound and then you would take it and back it up. And then mm, you could almost stop. Almost like scratching. Yeah, then you could stop. <laughs> you could stop the, uh, yeah, and you would sometimes go, well, you, rip, held rip, 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 you know, to kind of get it. 
you're just weak. right. That and then scratching, you, Alex. Then, scratching and, and, and then you would stop out. it. You would stop it until it was time to play. And then you would hold down your hand on the record, and you would tar start the uh, uh, turntable. And uh, once it got up to speed, you would uh, let go. And the record, if you were really good, you could segue really tight, right? I did progressive radio when I was in college, and that was all about the segue and doing these really artful segues. Yeah. When you do top 40, it doesn't really matter. It's bang, bang, well, bang. Well, now do you realize that what we did is now a money-making business, disc jockeys in clubs yes. are actually right. doing That's what, what we thinking, did. Alex, they're right. slip-starting the and doing DJ. the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they're using discs a lot. Yes, uh, 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 Jason? So another radio question why is it in the last couple of weeks that the am channel i listen to station that does the weather and traffic like i can't get it anymore in the morning until i'm like, like halfway to work it's like this time of year when it starts what? getting darker out oh, earlier okay. because you have at&t though is it early in the morning <laughs> early you in know. the morning okay. i know they because there's usually certain times that like something 15 there's always a blip in it when they like change something well they change right they, now they change the power because some yeah, stations have lower power early. at night than they do during the day but you know earlier in the summer when it was light out at this time well, that's of day, because I'd get it just fine it's but all dependent it's all out. it's all dependent on daylight that's the law in fact, the other part of that is too that there's no more money in AM radio, and they spend no money on really tuning the stations like they used to do. There's they've cut back on budgets, and the other thing is with all these cellular phones and all of this air traffic, mm -hmm. AM radio is really suffering right now. Well, I yeah, guarantee once the time change comes, I'm going to listen to it. It's going to be just fine in the morning. Well, you know what? Yeah, uh, it, it, what they're it, doing is that the time change isn't lining up with the power change. Did you ever did you, did you ever work uh, Rob at a day timer? Yeah, so hey. I, I've worked at uh, no, no, I've never worked at a, a station where we signed off, but I've worked at stations where it, when you worked a certain shift, you power up and power down. Okay, that was because the, you had a different. Power. And then you forget that at ten o'clock at night, and you, you know, and you you forgot to change the power like from at six or whenever it was. And some they had station in Des Moines is getting <laughs> interfered with, yeah, right? So what what Japan. is the point of that though? The point of it was to protect here, other stations. It was to yep. it, it, it was yep. to protect stations. There were certain stations in this country that were called clear channel stations. They had fifty thousand watts night and day. They were high up on the dial because the higher up on the dial you were the stronger your signal was. And so to protect those stations and their, what they called their, um, uh, their uh, uh, status. P1? Huh? P1? They're yeah, like well, their status. Certain stations would have to lower their power at night so as to not to interfere with those clear channel stations. And in some Lead cases, over. as I was mentioning to Rob, there were day timers. And these were stations that went on when the sun went up and they went yeah. off when the sun went down. Yeah. I so, worked at a station that was 5,000 watt daytime, 1,000 watt nighttime. But at night, to protect, it was at 1290 AM. And to protect, I don't even know where the stations were, but protect them, we were so directional at night right. that we, we served all the fish in the ocean. I mean, there was really, <laughs> we were just east yeah. i was already in babylon long island and we were so far east that it was just out in the water and it just went out great. to the water yeah there yeah, was times when, uh, radio when i was driving there was times when i could be driving up here in the bay area at night and listen to the dodgers games down in la you know oh because absolutely of, because of the skip absolutely i used to listen because to w i used to the listen to the transfers tra travels better at night I used to listen to the 50,000 watt stations like in New York. I used to listen to the all news station and WABC down in Florida when I was there in 79. As soon as yeah, the evening comes, away. yeah, yeah. How, loud and clear uh, while I was driving. Oh, uh, it's Charlene. You know, like it's, it's reminding me of American Graffiti and Wolfman Jack and stuff like that, right? Didn't they like uh, well, pick up Mexican radio? Well, Wolfman Jack and... used to work out of a Mexican radio station, XTRA. Right. In T in. Uh, right. I think it was in Tijuana, uh, and um, he could uh, they they could blast they would blast out, you know, a, a clear channel station in the United States was fifty thousand watts, right? All right. Mexican stations were blasting out with a hundred 
thousand yeah. watts, one hundred and fifty thousand watts, and they would just blast into the United States. Yeah, uh, they could shoot all the way up. They could shoot all the. No, they were it was like Wolfman Jack work. They played rock and roll. And I remember as a kid, I remember as a kid in California, we always used to listen to the Mexico XTRA. It was like the biggest station on the West Coast. So but they it, would speak it, Spanish and play music. Yeah, but it went all the way up to Canada and probably all the way out to the East Coast. So they had power. They had a lot of power in Mexico on the station. That's what I said. Yeah, they had like, uh, I think one of them had, I think maybe XTRA had 250,000 watts. Wow. wow. Yeah. Non-directional? Non-directional. Just <laughs> Damn. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> there were no rules and regulations. Oh, no regulation. They, right. No regulation. There was no in FCC in Mexico. Right, right. It's still remember like the that big, in Remember the big lie? The FCC is out. You better make sure you got your meter readings done. The FCC is in the area. They're looking. They may stop in. You make sure your your transmitter. Did you logs ever? Did all, you ever see the FCC? It, it's oh, competitors. Yeah. No, they never came. All that it, it's competitors that turn you in. They kept saying. It's true. No, they kept yeah. saying. They kept saying to you, you know, you can't say dirty words on the air, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, because we might lose our license. When I heard that story, up until. I think 1980, something like that, uh, because that's the last time I knew the number. Do you know how many stations got taken off the air because they lost their license to the FCC? I don't think One. Didn't, and you know what it was? Fine. You know what it was for? It was for financial improprieties. It wasn't for saying fuck or you know. It was an RKO so did you guys, station. Uh, wait a minute. Did you guys also wait, wait, hold, hold on a second. FCC hold hold, hold on a second. Do I see somebody? Is is Scott sleeping? No. Oh. Uh oh. Uh, He's checking his eyelids for holes. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, does anybody know why my camera is focused? Oh, okay. Your fingers in front of it. Wait a minute. What did he do? Turn out his light so we can't watch him. Uh, so we can't <laughs> watch him. <laughs> he does that, Scott. I I can't see, but. The, the, by the way, everybody, if you just tuned in, the black son, square right? is Scott. Look, I'll prove it to you. I'll bring up his name. There we go. I can see a Ray's little giving piece me of, tunnel vision. I yeah. can see a little piece of chrome there in the corner there. Really? It's the outer limits. I can't see it. There he is. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's dark. Yeah. Ray's giving us tunnel vision. So, listen. Uh, uh, so, the, weather, the weather's the weather been... You've just been getting a lot of rain where you are, right, Rob? Not real. I mean, we're getting rain, but none of it had anything to do with this hurricane it's just we've been getting a lot of rain we're so saturated here it's ridiculous now you're in one of the virginias now. you're one of the virginias another right week, right another week of this crappy weather what kind of or something right i'm 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 yeah well i'm up like in uh i'm near west virginia i'm like 30 miles from west virginia so that's how far north i am in virginia you know we don't we're not really seeing the hurricane we're going to get the tropical storm effects monday into tuesday it's not going to be that much of anything yeah. Just more saturation. I mean, how much more can we take? My grass is, I'm going to need, it's like, looks like a wheat field out there. I'm going to need a combine a soon. I have bugs, all kinds of crazy bugs and mosquitoes. And it's horrible because it's so wet. It's driving it's me crazy. And it's so dark. And the sky is always dark. I'm sick of it already. Yeah, yeah. It's and very I don't want to hear any more talk about hurricanes and stuff. It's and Trump's it's, Oh, it's bad news. Oh, you brought the cool. bugs. Well, you know what I, wet, I'll wet, wet. I, I, I I'll tell you what I'm really sick of is watching wet, all wet, these wet. news anchors standing out in the rain. Yep. Absolutely. You know, Alex, my mother is 87, and she did that to me today. And I thought of you. She was watching the guy, and the wind is blowing. And who's the guy of seven that replaced? Uh, Oh, shit. What's that guy's name? The national news guy. He's a young guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're all oh, fucking well, morons. You, you know, I don't... David, yeah. Everybody I talk to says, what are they standing out in the fucking rain for? <laughs> With their yeah, back to the ocean. To With their back to the yeah, ocean. Yeah, I mean, the one There's getting no, the most... Dr day, right? There's the, nothing the, the, going on, so they're Don waiting for something to I'm voting for most drenched is, is uh, what's his name over at NBC? Uh... Not Don Lemon? No. Yeah, that black guy. I can't remember no. his name either. Lester now. Lester Holt. Lester Holt. Lester Holt. Yeah, right. I He's been in the rain? Oh, the my God. Oh, yeah. He was there in his slicker, and it yeah, was all was wet, sushi. and he's trying to anchor the news. You know, and I'm going, you know, I'll bet from where you're reporting, 
you could walk five feet and be inside somewhere. Yeah. Because There's you can bet your life that shot. fucking you can bet your life that fucking cameraman is not getting himself wet. There, there's a guy <laughs> out of the shot with a garden hose and he's spraying yeah. everything from the top. Yeah. <laughs> and a Hollywood and a Hollywood fan, right? A Hollywood. Yeah, right. They're on some sound stage somewhere. You know, yeah. there was there was this one news guy and they and they he was holding on to a tree and the wind was blowing. Well, two uh, civilians walked past him like there was like the, nothing was happening, and they were in the shot. <laughs> so, you know, he, he's holding on, and and these two people just you know walked through the shot, uh, and it was like nothing was happening. Yeah. And look here, here's a piece of a ceiling fan. It and then then they it. then they go, oh, it's been it's terrible, it's really terrible. Uh, two people got killed. What? Two people got killed. Don't yeah, two people treat. get killed on a normal day if the traffic's flowing? Uh, they would have yeah, died anyway. Like Puerto anyway. Rico. That's what happened at a three thousand in Puerto Rico. <laughs> they would have died anyway. They would have yeah, died anyway. Right. Sure. Anyway. Yeah. I was. I was telling. Uh, this change of subject. I was telling um, Phil before when I called him that I did something today that I said I would never do again, and that is Hello. buy a new iPhone. We're all going to be jealous. Oh, you got the X. I bought the XS. Because oh, good. Yeah, you know I why? I, I looked at I was watching the the, the, the thing on Apple, you mm -hmm. know, and I was like, ah, who cares? Who I don't care about emojis. I don't care about any of that crap. But then they said one thing that I said I gotta get the phone. Two you line, you. you can have two lines on a phone, and I always carry two phones: a work phone, yeah, and a go. personal. Phone. Oh, that's good. Now then you, need wow. it. you can get an eSIM. They 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 support eSIMs now. Yeah. So now you it, can have. Two. It has a sim on both sides, on either no, side. No, it's just you use the one sim, the, yeah. the physical sim. I know, but it the, but it has a sim. It's really two sims, but they have two sides to the sim. That's What's not what they, sim? That's the way sim? they explained it. The the other sim is actually a memory thing. It's an e sim. Like a sim card. Uh -huh. like there's no. Card. There's only one physical sim. The other sim because you could have multiple ones and switch. So you can have. You could have like four lines, no, one, but only two could be hot at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's how do really you know what line they're calling. And can you well, clock because, on two lines so, at the same time? No, you can't. The downsides are you. If you're phone. on one phone, you will not know you're getting a call on the other phone. It'll go straight to voicemail. That's one thing. But what you can do is, so I have work contacts and I have personal contacts. Right. I could set up. That my work contacts automatically get called from my work phone number, and my personal contacts automatically get set oh, called from my personal good. number. And you could do, you can also, because my company gives us an unlimited data plan, so I could choose to use the data of one instead of the data on the other. There's a lot of cool functions. Oh, yeah, I uh, saying, like when I'm at work, I have my my work phone just call forwarded to my personal phone. Yes, if you so do that, what's the difference? Can, well, the difference is. You don't have two phone numbers. In and other words, know. I could text to two. I could text from either phone. Yeah. I could do everything from either phone. But you so don't. You don't. You, you don't get this phone, phone for a week yet, though, right? I'll get it a week from today. I'll get it next Friday. I'll get it. Yeah. They well, should try. Well, I just. I just got. I just got the iPhone X a couple of months ago, so I'm. I'm wedded to this. Although in a year, yes, I can wait. trade it in and get another one. Uh, yeah. But Rob, you what know, size uh, phone did you get? Did you get got, the uh, Max or? No. Uh, uh, I don't okay. like. But there's two phone. different sizes. Yeah, I, I like I, the bigness of it, but I'll never use your stuff, Rob. But I like that there's more facial recognition. They say, right? I don't like care about. Look See, at that, it. I'll tell you. Me you you, you'll, it, you, me you don't have it. facial recognition right now. You'll love it. Yeah. You'll love it because, like, whenever I use it to like uh, use my Apple Wallet. I just click twice on the side. It looks at my face and says, "Okay, just hold it up to anything where you no want to spend your money." Yeah. You know, it's a, 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 and it automatically it recognizes me every time I go on. I mean, right now it just it just, oh well now it's not doing it. There we go. when it's when it's dark out, uh, mine doesn't recognize me. It wants me to put in the code. No, mine recognizes me in the dark. What is it? It's not recognizing me now. <laughs> <laughs> I jinxed it. Okay. I mean, they, 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 didn't mention, they didn't mention the two-line feature until, like, the last feature. And I'm watching them going, eh, I don't care. I don't care. It's got the 500 million transactions at one time. I don't care. I don't have a problem with my phone. Then they said two lines, and I went, 
okay, I'm ordering it. Just hey, like was that at the store or were you watching no, it was, online? What size, what size memory did you get? I got the smallest one, the 64 gig. See, I have 256 in this one. Yeah, me Because too. I shoot video with it. I have to now, and there's probably only about 8 or 10 gig on there. In fact, I keep thinking, I'm going to go out and get a 4K camera if I take a vacation. And then I'm going, why? I shot downtown in, uh, in uh, uh, New York with, the, uh, with, with this phone and blew it up on my 4K screen. And it looked gorgeous. Just yeah. gorgeous. So the next time I go on, on any trip, I'm just shooting with this thing. Why not? You know, that and my, uh, uh, my uh, what do you call it? Whatever that other uh, gazorchen is. I, huh? iPad? No, my, uh, you know. Not the GoPro. No. Hello. GoPro. GoPro. Ray's been Ray. raising his hand. My GoPro. Hello. Yes, Ray. Oh, I was just thinking Apple, if they were smart, they would take advantage of the growing paranoid schizophrenic market with the two <laughs> wine thing. It's really... Uh, you know, it's a, an, op, an opportunity they're missing out on. I yeah, think. Well, you, ha you have twice the opportunity now, uh, Rob, of getting uh, of, of getting yeah. uh, <laughs> of, of getting robocalls. You know, so yeah, no, it, but I'm getting them anyway because I'm carrying two separate devices. And, and you can so talk same with yourself. And I, you know, I got to tell you something. Um, Hello, me. Am I there? And not not only the the cool <laughs> thing is because I have two iPhones, yeah. I'm going to sell me. both of them, and I'll recoup at least half. Of what it's going to cost me for this new phone? Not really. Yeah, I was. I've been looking online for what my, for my much, phone. Because the other one go, was go to jihadi much? go to jihadibomber.com and they'll pay you good money for those phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, How Alex. This... <laughs> what? What, Ray? Does the iPhone oh. 10 hut shoot better better video than the iPhone 7? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, considerably. So then. Considerably. Oh, it's me, Charlene. Okay. How um, much, Rob? But, for, how much phone? for what? How much for what? Phone. Like, the, the phone. like it was a thousand for the iPhone. Nine ninety nine. Yeah, nine ninety nine for the phone. So it's still That's a thousand. That's because you got the sixty four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, the other one's more expensive. If you want, yeah, if, if you want to go full board and you want to get the uh, uh, Max, right? Yeah. Uh, the big screen with. 200 and, no 500 uh, was it 520 k a megs of memory memory gigs of memory boy I'm, I'm losing it 250 what, what what's for it's 500 and 512 512 256 yeah. then yeah, 512 yeah it, yeah it it'll cost you close to $1400 right and Holy guess shit. what wow. for that $1400 they're no longer shipping the earphone adapter with it Oh, wow. That's wow. If you want the earphone adapter, you have to pay, ready, an additional $7. No. You oh, mean to on. say they these cheap motherfuckers at Apple can't afford to put the, it was in my box, the dongle, you know? Mine too. Have you guys seen it's the this new, thing? Uh, this thing, this new, thing, by the, the way, watch seven, seven bucks. I'm going to buy the watch. Oh, I'm buying the watch. Yeah. The watch, you can do an ECG now. Yeah. And I'm, you can and oh, you can ECG PDF. Right. You can take the PDF of your ECG and send it to your doctor. It'll alert you. It'll alert you if you have yeah. a, a, like a, arrhythmia problems. It'll say, you know, have, if you're not, what's the AFib is what it's called? Yeah, well, I'm if, on a, oh, yeah, AFib. If you treated for that. AFib, you should probably go see your doctor. Yeah, I, I, uh, um, I'm i going to buy one. Uh, although I'm on a fixed income, I have some cash I've stored away. And I'm going to get it. It's But the one I want is 529 because I want the one with the cellular in it. Uh, right. And I don't know why, but I do. How uh, much do they give you for the old one? Oh, I checked out what they give me for mine, twenty-five dollars. You're better. You're better off yeah. selling them on eBay. You'll do much. I'll give you thirty, mm -hmm. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> they were going to give me two hundred for my iPhone. For for my seven, they'll give me two hundred. For my six, they'll give me one hundred. And I've already looked at all the completed sales on. Um, and my phones eBay. are impeccable. This phone. Oh. This phone I got from Apple a few months ago. It's brand freaking new. What? There isn't a scratch on it. This is a seven. Yeah. The case, the phone itself, it's got a brand new battery in it, a hundred percent. They want to give me two hundred. I can I can get three and change for this phone on eBay, no problem. Yeah. 
Because they're you know, hottie you know, Jim will give you fifty uh, two two seventy five. <laughs> you guys, is that going to be the cost of uh, Apple iPhones? Like, is it going to be like a thousand now? And yeah, but get the, more expensive. Well, you, no, there's there's a little one. It used to be five. I'll, I'll tell you what time. happened. I went and I got this Ray because uh, I was paying. Sorry. I was paying uh, 135 a month for my phone service, and uh, I paid $500 for the phone, okay, out front, all right, and I just had to keep it for two years. What I did was I went to the place, and they said, well, here's what we can do. Uh, we'll give you this phone, and you'll be paying $45 a month for it, for the use of the phone for two years, all right? Oh, like the leasing thing, right. 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 And all that, blah, 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 and it'll come out to $125 a month. So I'm, and they gave, and then they sold me an iPad, and the iPad was cheaper. That, so the whole, the whole package with the iPad, which was once $30 and so on, it's now gone down to, I'm paying about $10, $15 less a month, and I've got the brand new phone. And if next year I want the new phone, uh, I can do that. I just start paying the two years over again. You know, do maybe you still have the grandfather plan. What grandfather plan? Data. Oh, I remember that. Unlim- from a long oh, yeah, I still have the I still have the unlimited on this. Yeah. Well, I have unlimited also, but it's not my it's not my original AT and T plan from 08. Yeah, well, that's okay though because you can use it now as a hotspot where you right. couldn't before. Yeah, which yeah. is awesome. Before. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. You haven't said anything tonight. Well, that's she probably because your mic isn't on. <laughs> now I can talk. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, I, yeah, I'm looking at my cell phone is all crapped up and broken, and and it still works. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, these things, they, you know, these things, they do keep working. I mean, the last, uh, uh, we kept our last phones for about two years, two and a half years, maybe three years. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But my we, success, I gave the fake. Yeah, I just had to turn my uh, work phone in. It was a six, and they upgraded it to an eight. But it was always in a case. I like I left it in my truck all the time. I really hardly ever carried it. But when I took it out of the case, I realized the phone was warped. The screen <laughs> was bent, and it was actually popped off in the middle. You could actually see the light through the phone. I'm like, holy shit! I just could not believe that the kind of shape that it was in. Do you know why that happened? I think it was the battery. Sat on it. What, I think it was the battery. <laughs> I think he the, put it in his back pocket. No, the battery. No, the this uh, this watch I had to probably because it, it usually stayed in the work truck. This watch, you know, like I said, I have it forwarded to my personal phone. This watch they had to fix, uh, and the reason they had to fix it was because the battery swelled, and the the face of the watch popped out. Wow. And wow. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, I put it down on the table flat. And I the reason also, the reason it, I wa- want the new oh, eye, wa- the new watch. I've had this about two, two and a half years. It's got a slightly larger screen. Okay, mm-hmm. it it doesn't look bigger because they they just moved it out through the bezel. Yeah, it's the same part. form factor. It's, it's the same it's form deep. factor, and um, uh, it is uh, the resolution is better. And I, I just thought I'd get it. The ten dollar a month plan. What the hell? And, and you know, the only thing that upsets me is I wish because you have to link it to your phone number. I wish you didn't have to because I would just get that for my kid. And so no, well, they, they, the, the reason is him. the reason is I think is they want you to have to have an iPhone even though you don't have to have an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you don't because it, it does originally it, have its own phone number, but you have to link it to a phone number you have. Yeah, yeah, right. it, you have to already have service. Okay. Ten bucks, ten people. But uh, uh, I, the only reason Whole I house. think I may not use it that much for cellular is because wherever I go, I usually take my 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 you know my iPhone with me, so it's always in contact with this. But I can just you figured, watch. Uh, can you watch TV and movies on the watch? I I don't why know. Why would you want? To? I, I don't. No, I, that's yeah, why, why I, would you want? I to? That's why what I'm thinking, Jason. Just yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, that's you know that's why I'd want the iPhone with me. What do I need the watch with cellular for? Yeah, well, well people take it out when they run and they don't want to have to carry their that's, phone. That's that's right. They don't want well, to have to carry. How much memory does it have? Can also, you also, how also far, the other day, the other day, uh, the other day, the day before I, on the, at night, I was going. I don't need one of the cellular ones because I always have my iPhone with me. And the other day, I went to the gym and I forgot my iPhone, hmm. and I went, "Fuck! I can't use the watch." Yeah, so. Uh, so but that does kinda, it have any memory on it to store music or no? Uh, no, you get all your music off the cloud. You get it downloaded off the cloud. And if you have unlimited like I do, it doesn't matter. You know, it's still it's still attached to your same AT and T account or your Chris same. Chris joined us and somebody in nine one seven. What do you mean? And you have a full house. Wait a minute, nobody joined nine one seven. Who just called us on from nine one seven? Is it me on a, on a phone uh, line? No, that's yeah, that's that's oh. Charlene. She's, she's oh. been there all so night. Where have you to, been? I was yes. what happened. But I saw I, I I saw her earlier. And Chris is here. We got yeah, Chris. Chris Ritter has joined us. Hello, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Well, how are you? You're in Vegas tonight? No, I'm in uh, California. Really? You just pop around everywhere, don't you? I do. Yeah. Now, I forget, what is it exactly you do for a living, Chris? I, uh, I fix problems for individuals. So, you, know, I, uh, <laughs> you mean you're like uh, Ray Cohen? Donovan. No, He's you're like, like the ice pick. You're yeah. like, you're like Michael Cohen? <laughs> yeah, uh, Dexter. <laughs> yeah. He's a Dexter. I work with entertainers and help them with uh, publicity and whatever else. So accounting. He pays off the hookers or makes them disappear. <laughs> so sometimes it's good to have a place in between L.A. and Vegas, which is what this was supposed to be. In the middle of the desert. Right has the, the whole bodies. has the whole Me Too thing in, affected how you do business? It affects how other people do content and how they how they uh, do comedy. You know, it's. It's been going on for a long time. There's other things, other factors they have to take care of. Yeah. But, uh, you know, people who work colleges, they, for a long time, they've had to be very, very, very sensitive, not not to uh, anger or piss off even 1% of the audience. In the old days, you could piss off 15% and be popular. I'm a, I'm a very, I'm very in admiration of Bobby Slayton that he's still working because... You know, it's a different world from when he came in there. You know, well, yeah, of course. But you know, it, what was I? What did I hear on on, t work colleges. on TV tonight? Well, he doesn't like colleges because he doesn't like their their attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, and Seinfeld's not very controversial. You would think it wouldn't be so bad for him to play. Colleges. No, but he doesn't like the airplane peanuts. Is not a big controversial subject. Yeah, but he's also not funny. What do you mean? Nobody wants Are you out of your mind? Today. Are you out of your mind, Jason? I think he's great. Yeah, uh, you guys are older too. Sorry. Ooh. Oh, playing that <laughs> card. Huh? You know, today. Huh? Huh? Everybody at the same time. The there we go. Eating some donuts. <laughs> How old are you now, Jason? I'm still in my thirties. Still, uh, wait, that must mean like thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Yeah, yeah thirty-eight. You know. See, that. well, because <laughs> you wouldn't have said I'm still in my thirties. <laughs> He's 38 and a half. Nobody who's 31 like says I'm still in my 30s. Okay, yeah. so hey, remember when we were under under 10? You know, I'm nine and a half. Right, <laughs> right, right. Interesting. You know, uh, I'm nine and a half. That's how mature I am. You're now, still in your 70s. Now I've got a 79th birthday coming up in December, wow. and and I don't say I'm. 78, 78 and, and three quarters. <laughs> you know, I, I, I refuse to do that. I just don't, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, but what's 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 that? What have you? What what are you doing, Ray? Are you bucking? <laughs> Who was that, Ray? I think that's his son. <laughs> yeah. Was that your son? <laughs> oh, your son must love you. Uh, uh, oh yeah, totally. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, but David Belletti here says, by the way, here's something interesting about XERB. That was a station in Mexico. Wolfman Jack first came to XERB from XERF in 1966 and did overnights. So that's where he got his reputation, and that's why it wound up in American Graffiti, because the kids in Modesto would sit around listening to 
Wolfman Jack out of out of uh, out of Mexico. It was, was AM, that's short wave, right? Yeah, it was AM. AM radio. Yeah, absolutely. When I was in high school, I played Wolfman Jack in a choir concert because I had the <laughs> deepest voice and I could do the raspy. This is Wolfman Jack. Don't you lie? Yeah. <laughs> Choir concert? Did you have to wear one of those uh, things around your neck like the priests do? No. Is it me no. or did we lose Hobbit? Ray? We lost Ray, Ray but I think it's because he's home and he's probably going to go to his his computer. That's what's going to yeah. happen? I think his kid well, was on the computer. That, yeah. But what I'm saying, uh, what I was saying, Chris, is that uh, uh, what did I hear today? That somebody was doing a show. Was doing the show uh, the uh, uh, the Deuce. And they have somebody assigned to the show to watch out that everybody be, is, do, is not being, doing stuff they don't want to do because it's a very sexual show. And so if somebody has a romantic naked scene with somebody, uh, this person's job on the staff is to make sure they don't mind doing it. I mean, it's gotten that. Or know. they put the napkin in between them. Huh? Make yeah, sure it's right. not a full staff. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to remember what they, they had a name for the job. Fluffer. Yeah, have yeah, you, have you heard about this? That a lot of TV shows are starting to employ people to to oversee pr propriety? I, I haven't heard that, but it makes sense. And it goes the other direction, too. I have a good friend who his girlfriend just got into porn six months ago, so he's always telling me everything she's experiencing as a newbie and she apparently is uh, getting a following. It's it's taking fire. So she comes off a set, and they're like, "Oh, tell us everything that happened." And there's that's I a different that's the that's guys. the exact opposite, you know. Has she met Trump yet? Uh, <laughs> no, that's but she's worth she 130 has, grand. Yeah. yeah, she has met those who have met him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Son of a gun. So she just got into it. Yeah, in February. Yeah, wow. and so she. Uh, I had no idea there was so much prep work that went into it because she does, <laughs> she does the kink, the kink, and uh, they a fly enemas, a lot of enemas. She has to prepare the day before. She has to always be on call, be ready. It's, uh, it's a little bit like an athlete, athletic competition, a little bit. Wow. And uh, it's not all that erotic when you, no, when you hear the blow by blow, you know. Although she, <laughs> she, uh, so she really feels empowered by the experience and she hated stripping she felt it was demeaning but she loves porn wow. well there is and there, money quick uh, and the I, boyfriend staying with her huh yeah well th wow. this is yeah. this is the thing that uh that most people don't realize about porn and that is that women do have a lot more power in porn than they have almost anywhere in this society because they can say yes no I'm not going to do that. I will do that. And it's respected. But do they really anymore? Because there's so much of this free amateur shit out there well, that you could just go grab some other well, chick off the street if, if, who's willing to do it and the one girl isn't? Uh, well, that's why you you have a special skill set. You have asymmetrical skill and a look, and you look that <laughs> So your asymmetrical you skill is I'm willing to do it. anything? Right. <laughs> She gets her. She always has to have her nails ready and her hair ready at all points. So wow. can't wow. take a day off from that. Yeah. Like wow. one of those voiceover guys that does the uh, voiceovers for like the five o'clock news. Those guys carry their microphones with them because they could be anywhere, and all of a sudden a story breaks and they have to go and they have to do the 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 coming up and all the stuff that they do for the news. They could be out and something. And, and they change. want their microphone. They want, yeah. They 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 do all kinds of. They go in cars where the there's a you know pretty decent uh, sound, or they get under blankets and they. Have they you make it ever sound been good. that particular about the way you sound? I Who, never me? cared what microphone they put in front of my face. Yeah, but when you're doing when you're doing that kind of thing, you you need to be. I guess. Yeah, it's different, Mister. I have a microphone that's sixty some years old. Yeah, well, I'm. Yeah. You know, it still it still fucking works. And, and yeah, I was, didn't. Yeah, and there's some guys that smoke just because of the way their voice sounds, right? Uh, do you know some that? Well, I'll tell you, guys? it 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 killed somebody. I'll tell you who it At least killed. Back in the day, I'll tell you who it killed. It killed Nat King Cole. Smoking. Mm. Yes, he yeah. he smoked and wouldn't quit because he liked the way it made his voice sound.
Right. And right. he also wouldn't record after noon. He had early morning recording sessions when his voice was still, you know, wake exactly. up voice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, he died for his art, literally. If he had stopped smoking, you know, <laughs> still probably would have been damn good. But, you know, he, he didn't have died think anyway. So. Huh? Thought, he would have uh, died thought, anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't Tom Donahue have that too? Tom or no. Tom, you mean the announcer? Yeah. Not that I know of, but the only time I ever met Tom Donahue is he passed out on my girlfriend's bed and we had to yeah, move him. Yeah, I that too. I mean, you know, he was good for that. We had to move him and uh, uh, that was no <laughs> Big fun. Big Tom Donahue. Huh? <laughs> Big Tom Donahue. Big Tom Donahue. Yeah. Uh, Big personality in the San Francisco Bay Area radio deal. So, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, you know, we're kind of we're starting to run out of time, and we really haven't even touched on Donald Trump tonight. Isn't that good? Or, huh? or Manafort. Or Manafort. Or Manafort. I wonder what. Did, did oh, anything flipper. happen? Oh, flipper. oh where Faster did than lightning. No was one you see. Uh, Kavanaugh guy. Was that yesterday? Am I like behind? Kavanaugh, like there's some woman that says oh, he raised yeah. her or something. Einstein. That's terrible. Yeah, as much letter. as I don't like Kavanaugh, I think that's terrible. If I you're going to, you have to come bullshit. out and you got to get in front of the crowd and say, this guy did it to me, this is my name, and then talk about it. This bullshit of redacting the person's name when he was she was in high school, really? High school. I'm, that's bullshit. And that really is. And it really, you know, you know, you know I, I, listen, I will, I don't want to defend him either. Okay. I don't either. I, do. but I think he's bullshit. a creep, and I think he's scary, and I think there's I like a, him. I, I think there's about thirty thousand pages or hundred thousand pages of of stuff which could like make him look like shit, which they're not releasing. Okay, uh, of course you like him, Phil. You you know, you like Machiavelli. Right. But uh, it's still you know. wrong what they're doing right now. This yeah. but it is wrong. Bullshit. It is wrong. There's women it's sitting out far. there. At, there's women sitting out there. And when they like, she must have heard this. The, the woman that's saying it, and like, oh, now's I my opportunity. Oh, I, I don't. No, wait a minute. I, I don't on. think it's the woman that was scorned. I think it was the uh, somebody that was in the high school at the time. Now she's living in California. She sent a letter to Anna Eshoo, who was her representative, and Eshoo gave it to Feinstein. Uh, this I don't believe was actually the woman that or the girl that was involved it was somebody else saying oh, that there was an incident well i think that what we've got to take into consideration here is is that i think it's time we started having a cutoff date you know right, right. when yeah, i hear when i hear now, yeah. now i've heard things about uh, les moonves now right. after the fact which is not too good but like the fact that just time. recently one of the women who was going to speak out against him said she was going to come out with some tapes and a Les Moonves got a hold of her and offered her a very high paying job at CBS. That's mm -hmm. like in the last couple of weeks. So that's kind of indicting. And then the all right. Guy had one. At that, right. like at that point, the people who liked him, at that, at that point, the people who liked him <laughs> on the CBS board of directors said, fuck that. That's it. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, but the, but going back 30 years and saying he tried to touch me or whatever, I think shouldn't, they shouldn't do there that? be shouldn't there be a cutoff date? You know, like well, that guy uh, in Alabama. Didn't they do that to him? The the, the uh, mall uh, the Roy mall Milton, guy. Roy, yeah, Roy, but, yeah. Yeah, it was. I don't man, think it was man like he that. was doing with kids though. Yeah, but he was like 20 40. something years old. But he was doing it. He was still, older. You're 20 some years old but, and you're trying to bang a 13 year old. That's still well, wrong. Who says yeah, he, he was, was trying older. to bang her? I, they, and this is Alabama. Alabama, they get married. <laughs> she <laughs> said he was trying to bang her. Yeah, they get the married. The mom said. Then. Yeah. So they, 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 you know. It, it wasn't just Phil, one, though. You're with just him. a racist white man. No, but in in the case of. <laughs> in, in the case of. Uh, of uh, uh, Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh. They were even, they were I think even it's cute. I think it's a. I think there should be a cutoff date. You know, and I think that what happened in high school. I mean, who knows how much, how true or untrue the story is. There are other things about him, though, like the fact that he is a compulsive gambler, 
yeah, and has really? lost as much yeah. as two hundred and fifty thousand yep. dollars. That should kind of come into question because yep. he could be bribed. Great for a Supreme Character. Court judge Character. to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, a gambler. Th- and that's that not. Well. And that's not. That's not twenty, thirty years ago. That's a couple of years ago. All right. Like last year. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, maybe he maybe he can afford it. Now, there are there yeah, are many reasons why he should be he shouldn't be uh, put in, but this is not one of them. Right. My, my right. cousin would gamble a hundred thousand dollars in a weekend. You know, uh, he hasn't been doing it lately. But what does that have to do with right. Kavanaugh? Well, what what it means is is there's guys out there that are totally functional. And yes, that's but, what they, they but do. that's their entertainment. We're not asking. You know, the, uh, Rob, judge. Rob buys a Corvette. You buy a Mac Mini. He's uh, a judge. My cousin gambles. It, it, so, you know, we're not asking them uh, to be uh, a lifetime Supreme a Court, lifetime, uh, a Supreme uh, Court justice. Where yeah. if he makes a bet and he owes money to the mob, he may make a decision. Yeah. Based Reckless. on that, does any, does any of these monies that he supposedly gamble is he on the hook for it? Does uh, he owe uh, a Shylark? We don't money? know. We, don't, we know. don't know. We don't know. You tell us. Might be wearing cement boots next week. <laughs> well, if he is, then you don't have to worry about him getting in the. That's Supreme okay. <laughs> because yeah, because uh, then, Donald will throw him some paper towels. Because uh, uh, Donald, wow, uh, uh, Donald only Donald wanted Kavanaugh because problem. he couldn't get Judge Judy. Yeah, there's another Trump there's another story that came out about Trump this week. Have, has anybody seen the book that came out on the USFL? No, no. There's a book out about the USFL. And if you remember, Donald Trump bought the generals. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. He wanted to be a, he wanted to get into the NFL for years. And the NFL said, you don't have a character. We don't want you. You're going to destroy the league. So he <laughs> bought the generals. Too. Now, destroyed the league. <laughs> Look at now with this, he yeah. destroyed the USFL on purpose because he wanted the generals to be brought into the NFL. And yep. he got he got all the owners of the USFL to buy into his bullshit. And people kept saying, why are we even listening to him? But they did. They started paying too much salaries. They started doing all yep. this stuff to bankrupt the league so he could have the, the, the few big teams that had more money get moved into the NFL. And by the way, that works why, why do you think he hates the NFL? And you know who his attorney was? Cohen. Roy yep. Cohen. Roy Cohen. <laughs> He's been a slug for a long time. He's One been of those a big- one of those he's been big, a slug. Uh, salaries was nope. young. And why do you think it is that he's going after the NFL now over this whole taking a knee, knee the thing? Knee, with, right. Because yeah. he has a big hard on for the NFL now because they wouldn't let him play in their game. Yep. Uh, it's just more of the more. Try to tell people that. Shitty. All, all, the, all you New Yorkers should know that too. Yep. Exactly. This guy has absolutely no character. It's the means to an end. The end only matters. The means do not. And people buy into his stuff. What you're dealing with is that. So you're ready to give up everything for the end game. And I don't think that's a smart. That's not a. It's not a, a way to, to run your to run the country to run your life. And nothing matters except the end goal. That's Donald you know, Trump. Uh, do you think that a certificate from Trump University is worth something? You know, toilet graduation. paper. Toilet mm-hmm. paper. Yeah. How about a it, it might be in like one of those buildings out speed. there. <laughs> There what were, a deed on some of those buildings out there. Yeah. Uh, which buildings? <laughs> the ones that are falling apart or the ones that have been sold, the, the ones that have gone bankrupt? Yeah. Well. The ones they're tearing the name off of? <laughs> a Trump diploma is, might be a collector's item in the future yeah. as a novelty gift. <laughs> yeah. So uh, oh, I, I haven't read the book about the. Uh, the God, USFL. you just say the word Trump and listen what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Would you get some more viewers? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, I went to the gym today and I had my first session with a personal trainer uh, and I didn't cry. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, sore it was tomorrow. okay. Yeah. Is your well, trainer a male or a female, Phil? So it's, it's a male. Uh-huh. Did he put his balls in your face when he was spotting you on the bench press? Uh, no benching. It was uh, it was all resistance stuff, you know. Uh, so he didn't answer about the balls in the face. <laughs> I went to my I, I went to my I went to my uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, 
uh, uh, Jim? Uh, neurologist today. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said that uh, he felt the physical therapy was helping certain things because I'm walking differently now. But uh, he, uh, so what he decided to give me is amitriptyline. Wow. I can't take this with Xanax because it will make me fall asleep. This is going to make me fall asleep anyway. I don't know. He, she, he says it may help with the nerve pain. Hey, so. if you're walking differently, did he say you were light in the loafers? No. <laughs> okay. No. But anyway, so so I've got a, a real uh, – uh, so I, I'm going to have to see how – I, I took amyltriptyline once before, and I don't know what for, and it – does it help you go to sleep? Oh, it knocks you out. That's why I can't take the uh, Xanax anymore. Yeah. You don't need it. Yeah, yeah well, they said if I take it the next morning, I'm going to have a hard time Is operating. it like tryptophan? No, it's amyltryptyline. Uh, amyl yeah, tryptophan. what do you do? You break it and put it under your nose in a disco? No. <laughs> it's a <laughs> pill. Nitrate, it's so. a tiny <laughs> little pill. In fact, it may be... Gee, it's the tiniest pill that I've ever had to take. It's, it's like that size. Pa pass them out. Everybody gets one. They're, yeah. Hey, speaking of anal, I got a clean bill of health. Ooh, oh, very did, nice. Oh, really? Ten years. Ten, Ten years. years. So you got a clean butt. Yep. That's wonderful. Is Santa going to tell that to the kids? Did you tell Brian? No. Hey, I, I thought they found a polyp. Tuesday. Oh, they, they found a polyp, but it wasn't cancerous? Apparently not. He left me a message tonight. Huh. Yeah. It says, Dora, don't have to go explore it no more. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. It, well, the worst part of it was the prep. That's the worst part. The best part of it was the mm -hmm. drugs. Oh, the best part of it's the drug that puts you out. It's just like a quick second that you feel great. But it's it's a nice little yeah. flash. I of, didn't even think the worst part was the prep. I thought the worst part was when I went in and I was worried that I was going to shit while I'm having the procedure done. But it's not <laughs> your yeah, problem. You know it doesn't you happen. Exactly. You only worry about that for a second until you yeah. passed out. Yeah. It doesn't happen, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I I've often worried about that too because I used to take the laxative again in the morning. But then you do one little poop and then that's it. It's just you've cleaned yourself out. You're empty. Yeah, yeah. You're empty. It is a cleansing feeling, yeah. Uh, it really is. I, I almost want to do it once a year to lose weight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I was thinking about that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Phil. Good having you here tonight. You didn't even drive us crazy because we didn't talk about Trump much. Uh, uh, give me a chance. I know. On the Jack Show so we can talk about politics. Uh, yes, Scott, great uh, seeing you and uh, even seeing you in the dark. That was a nice treat. That was the best time. Because yeah, also we had Ray in the dark and we had two dark panels, but whatever. Uh, hey, uh, 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 Kevin, good talking to you. Uh, Darlene, always nice talking to you. Charlene. Crit uh, Charlene. <laughs> That's okay. Just I don't call her Christine. Charlene. I just think of this as the yeah, little rascals, Charlene. and you're one of a bunch. Uh, Charlene. Mm -hmm. And thanks, Chris. We really appreciate it. We always like your calls. Uh, and Mr. Mr. Alfano, who's going to be on the cover of next month's Cigar Magazine. Aficionado. Cigar uh, aficionado. A, a cigar aficionado. Uh, uh, adjacent. Nice that, uh, you know, she lets you out, but, uh, you know. She's Seinfeld still, rules. At least we got to see her tonight. <laughs> Seinfeld rules, exactly. Jeff, good yeah. talking with you. And, of course, Ray Renati. Said nothing. You and your wife with your dogs and your puppies and all, your, yeah, all of that. Everybody, yeah. give a Wait. big, big wave goodbye so that they can all see you. And we'll see you again next week. Sorry for the short show tonight, but uh, it really was a good one. Maybe I should do them short all the time. Bye-bye. Okay. That's it for our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, uh, they'll be back again next week. I'm only doing a, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, what, a three-day week next week because we're going up to Vermont on Friday. So uh, Damien's going to do the show. Uh, I, I let Jack do it last time. This time I'm going to let Damien uh, do it. Um, pass the wealth around, okay, as it were. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, next is Jack Bishop and the intersection, followed at 1 o'clock by Connections. And then if you come back on Tuesday, 930, 
Damian Chapman will be here with the exchange. And then I will see you 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.